So welcome back to Game of the Goons. Um, you're here with Lee, and we're playing Bioshock Infinite. Um, so this is a retrospective look. Um, so I played this already when it came out on PSN. Um, and we're going to... Well, I'm going to commentate on it. Um, commentate on my playthrough. Retrospectively. Uh, sorry, so I did lose some footage here. Um, you go into a lighthouse, um, a rocket launcher into the sky, and as it drops back down, this is what we're viewing. So as I was saying, I'm going to talk about the gameplay, talk about decisions I made um, at the time. Um, I played it when it came out for free on PSN. Um, and, and did film it, but I didn't do any commentary at the time. Um, there are some racial themes, there are some uh, religious themes. So if that's going to be of offence to anyone, um, just a pre-warning, do not watch this series. Um, check out some of our other series, um, maybe some of the, the bite-sized videos. Just a little pre-warning. So I do have to apologise here, as I come out, um, Bioshock 1 Bioshock 2, they're a bit more... Um, a bit more creepy, a bit more you go around the corner and a big daddy will pop out and kill you. Um, so of course, not sort of knowing what Bioshock Infinite's like going in, I'm, I'm a bit too cautious if you want. <laughs> yeah, you can see that like, very, very, very cautious, just in case. Um, Bioshock Infinite actually has a really different kind of style as well. Oh look, coins. I went for coins straight away. <laughs> yeah, but um, this is a very different kind of style to Bioshock 1 and Bioshock 2. Um, it's one of the best stories, I think. I think the first, no spoilers, but the first Bioshock's got quite a good story, and this one has two. Um, we'll be doing the whole Bioshock Infinite series, including the Barrow at Sea DLC. Yeah, you see, look, just being overly cautious, to be honest. <laughs> and as you can tell, there's a lot of um, religious themes that seem to seep in as well. Um, the religious themes, oh, more coins. Um, as well as some of the, the more negative themes are linked. Hence my warning at the beginning. So I'm just being cautious. I'm looking around, just being cautious. First time I played it, I wasn't sure. I was a bit nervous. Because he loves the sinner. I love the sinner because he is you. Without the sinner, what need is there for a redeemer? Without sin. So there you go. So there's some um, like an audio tape, audio log. Um, they sort of give a bit more background of the story, a bit more background into motivation to different characters. Excuse me. Where am I? I didn't want to approach him because I thought he. <laughs> oh, he's scary. Just keep such questions to myself, unless I want to. Get I thought he was going to attack me as I walked by him, so I just like trying to avoid him and see what was around the other side. Again, just being overly cautious. I think Bioshock One and Two has a lot more stealth um, than this game. I think this is more like a first-person shooter. There are some dark and creepy elements in it, but there's nothing. It's, it's honestly not as not as creepy as the Bioshock One and Two. Bioshock One and Two, and, and some of the Barrow at Sea DLC is a bit creepier, to be honest. Very different style of gameplay, but it does feel like a Bioshock game. There you go, looking at what he's dressed like, seeing if he was going to attack me. Again, walking down the stairs, so I'm trying to keep a good sort of view. Let's have a look at the stained glass windows, see what it read. And every year, on this day of days, we recommit ourselves It's almost like some kind of baptism. We recommit through sacrifice. Uh, we'll see how much I remember actually of this. And by game. submerging ourselves in the sweet waters of baptism. And lo, 
If the prophet had struck down the penalty as it wounded me and not railed against the Sodom beneath us, it would have been enough. If the prophet had just railed against the Sodom beneath us, but not accepted the three just, golden um, gifts of the to what he was saying it here. would have been enough. If the prophet had just accepted the three golden gifts of the pounders and not prayed for our deliverance, it would have been enough. If the prophet had only prayed for our it's deliverance, it's not super relevant to the story, to but it is super Eden, relevant to the it theme. It would have been enough. If of the this prophet new had Eden. just led us to the new Eden and not purged the vipers of the Orient, it would have been enough if the prophet had just purged the vipers of the Orient, but not suffered the sacrifice of his beloved. It would have been enough if the prophet had just suffered the sacrifice just of gone his for beloved, a while. but not expelled the Vox Populi. It would have been enough. So I think, I, yeah, you have to end at the Is circle it to. New? Activated. Someone from the sodden below, newly come to Colombia to be washed clean before our prophet, our founders, and our lord. I just need passage into the city. Passage to the city. Rather, the only I way to come to approach is uh, through him in the black robes. The sweet waters of baptism. Will you be cleansed, brother? Hey, I'm just Turn. looking to pass through. Take his hand. I see. I seen if there was like choices to to get out, find the way around. But you don't really have an option. So eventually, I reluctantly approach him. <laughs> even the even the character comments there. I'm, just, I'm too nervous. baptize you. In the name of our prophet, in the name of our founders, and the name of our Lord. I don't know, brothers and sisters, but this one doesn't look clean to me. And then drowned again. Well, not drowned, but like that. Then you have a flashback. So I don't want to. I don't want to spoil too much of the story. Um, Who's there? Who's there? Bring us the curb and wipe away the dead. What do you want? We have a deal to it. Open this door right now. I told you. I'm not gonna do it. Go away. Again, he didn't want to open the door. Mr. DeWitt! Yeah, so they're banging the door a lot. I'll check on which door I can go to. Having a look around, seeing what it was about. I didn't really want to open the door straight away. And then we see what's behind it. Looks like New York City, the Empire State Building, being attacked with the uh, Sephar. <coughs> so I awaken. So again, it's not really creepy. That um, idiot priest needs to learn the difference between baptizing a man and drowning one. I've seen if you can go back, but that's where I, I came from. Landmark and figure out where the hell I am. Um, I don't really know where I'm going at all. A bit lost. And, and it's really interesting. Like Bioshock Infinite is very where Bioshock One and Two is very dark. Um, Bioshock Infinite is very colorful, like eerily colorful. And so each year we recommit ourselves to our founders. And to be honest, I think it's part of the style, as you'll see as we go along. Our prophet fills our lungs with water, so they may better love the air. Again, just looking at, see what they're saying, taking all the coins they can, um, even like the health, which is food in this game. I don't know if I can read the signs. Again, eat the apple for health. I think I was trying to take the books, to be honest. He didn't tell anything to me. Oh, this bit, I was admiring the honey uh, the hummingbird. <laughs> Just it hovers in the detail. He who crossed the Delaware with flaming sword and wings of angels. Watch over me 
and lend me strength. A again, Shield very my mind from fear and doubt, so that I may hold fast against all invaders. Very colorful. Father Washington, hear my prayer. A rebel against ignorance and tyranny. Share with me your wisdom and let the light of your good judgment shine by the sword and, and the scroll. scroll. So and listen key. to a lot of the um, text, just as sort of. Only providence. It it doesn't really give you too much about the story, but it gives you more about the, you um, the trans about what everyone thinks and sort of the mindset of the people and civilization here. Just because the city flies, don't mean it ain't got its fair share. Just of reading fools. the banner at the top. All right. So got a girl to find. I do apologize. It takes me a little while to get used to the fact that it's not as creepy as Bioshock One and Two, and then. <laughs> We revealed to the floating city of Columbia. Uh, you have to wait till it um, comes down. Just admiring what's going on, admiring the blimps, the zephyrs, the skyline or cargo bots. The thing I like in, in Bioshock is the, the world they build, so that's why I'm going to different people and sort of listen to what they're saying. It gives you a really good idea and sense of like world building. Eat the chips or crisps. Nothing in the bins, but I begin to search a lot of bins. He takes. There's a hot dog there as well, which I take um, for no money whatsoever. He didn't say anything. Let's see if he did. I thought it would count stealing. It doesn't. Father Comstock must have foreseen and planned it. I'm trying to see what they're watching. Then again, you see like the cargo bots, the skylines, which become a bit of a thing a bit later on. There you go. Taking the cargo bots with them. I've seen if I could read the news and see what it said. All of Columbia celebrates there in some sort of celebration. That statue. I just think it fails to capture Father Comstock's absolute divinity. So I heard the, heard the name. I think that's immediately here. I thought. Oh, that's There's the no main villain. <laughs> so I decide to have a look and see what people said about him. Find the one it's person that hates him. Right, What's this my plan? Faith, family, and Money and again. Always looking bad. bins, apparently. Not now. I don't I don't condone that advice. That's bad advice. In games, it's fine. So it's like this shop. Then he come and they're like floating seas. But I thought, why not have a look around and see what's about? Uh, mainly for money, to be honest. Um, just a pair of shoe, some shoe boxes. I think I go inside now. Never hire an artist, my dear fellow. They are a temperamental and unreliable lot to a man. Uh huh. I told him that the park is exceedingly far behind schedule. The, so they also the have these things um, the, the statuary hasn't arrived. called um, the is full of kinetoscope, for God's sake. Um, and it gives you sort of insight into, uh, I want to say propaganda, but it's not always propaganda, it's just like, um, it kind of it kind of is, it's like silent, silent movies, they give you a bit of background on some characters or the world, um, and they count as collectibles as well, they count to the sites here. I don't think I got all of them, but I got a fair chunk of them. A theme. Uh -huh. There you go, sights here, one out of 37. He I, did, I didn't get all 37, but I got that, quite a few. I'm exploring out of listening to what they're saying. Down there? Yes, sir. Realized it wasn't super interesting, so I decided to leave and then carry on. 
find out where to go next. Plus, I was also learning the controls at this point, so then I think that's where I figured out how to run. Now, what does Vox Popula even mean, for heaven's sake? Uh, it's Latin. It means. Latin. <laughs> so, Vox Populi uh, are kind of like the. I want to say they're enemies of Comstock. They're kind of like the rebellion group. But we find out, we'll find out a bit more a bit later on. seeing um, what doors were locked and what doors are open. Uh, I think a lot of this road is kind of closed like that, so you don't really have too much day, choice citizen. in what to do. You're looking fit. Sport, friend. I can tell you're a man who's keen on sport. I'm fond of the Greco-Roman style, you know. If you want, I can always teach you. I don't know what that was at all. And he offered to teach me, and he showed me nothing. Can spare him. Nothing in that one. So you got this weird thing here, like the horses are all sort of powered up by. It's almost steampunky in the way because they're powered up by like um something they call a shock jockey later on. You have a look, and it's like a mechanical horse is powered up, very steampunky. There's a celebration parade as well. I am celebrating Comstock and his miracle child. So a lot of the first part of the game is um, it, it's almost world building um, you kind of get an idea of the world the before it gets like it gets anywhere or well, the story begins to, to pick up um, so the first two episodes will be a bit more world building and exploring um, until we until we get into the meat of the, the game Columbia raffle and fair huh. so it looks like raffle and fair is the way to go so the grocery store's open, um, so I was going to go check in there as well. Let's have a listen to them first, though. There's a sign that's an honor system. Sign, it's an honor system. Um, so I think I take all this money. Do I take it? Maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't. Take the money. That's what I'd normally do. Yeah, I did take the money. <laughs> Turn the radio off, which plan is not bad. It wasn't bad, but I just like now nah, turn it off and have a, have a explore. Um, so you can drink alcohol in this game, and it makes you blurry and makes it hard to see when you're aiming. Um, if you drink too much of it. Or do, so there's med kit there, there's health there, there's a cake there. I thought I can't answer the phone, which I couldn't. You could eat the cake though. But my health's full, so it's a bit irrelevant. That's a med kit. Um, obviously don't need it at the moment. Nothing in the boxes, so I'm just exploring, looking for money. Here you go. But, on my way out, I do give him one coin back. I felt a bit guilty, so I give him one coin back. And then found some more in the barrel, I said. I don't quite know what I was doing there, to be honest. <laughs> looking at the apples. And so we got to go that way, so I want to go this on the left bit up here and just see what's about first. Um, I always explore the bits I haven't been to. Never know what you'll find. Empty purses. Would you care for a boutonniere? We're raising money for the girls' patriotic league. <laughs> Maybe next time. You'd look dashing with one in your lapel. Come back if you change your mind. Flowers and the flowers. You can hear the barbershop quartet. As well. I 
Oh, and another Fox effect, uh, which is the audio tapes and some cheese while listening. Ah, sorry, so here I was just trying to activate the tape for you guys. Um, so you got to press down to play it normally, don't play it automatically. Um, One so I was going to go play the tape for you so you can of baptism, A different man comes out, born again. But who is that man who lies submerged? Perhaps that swimmer is both sinner and saint until he is revealed onto the eyes of man. How the thing presents God only knows. I'll make you so sure about so this, this uh, as as I mentioned before, it does have themes of uh, sort of yeah. So it does have some more more negative um, themes, um, but. The way the way the story works, it paints a picture of like, oh, this is such a nice place, um, and then slowly puts the more negative uh, themes in. So listen to them, barbershop quartet. That's their left, and then we uh, begin to head on to the carnival. So I think we'll find a good place to stop in the next couple of minutes. Um, and then that kind of talk draws attention. Oh, don't turn oh. into some faint and radical on me, John. I do not want to be some character out of I Married a Box Popular, now do I? The kids have a really creepy laugh. <laughs> Right, so uh, we locate the statue of Columbia. Said I'd find her. Telegram, Mr. Dewitt. Huh. Telegram for you, sir. Let's get a telegram. It's interesting. Dewitt, stop. Do not alert Comstock to your presence. Stop. Whatever you do, do not pick number seventy-seven. Stop. Letice. So there's a, a note from Letice. I'm not sure who that is at this point in the game. So I was trying to see if there was an, um, what the goals do, and also whether I heard the name Letice before. Oh, coins. And then we have a look at through the telescope as well. Just because you get these count to the sites here, trophies, by the way. Looking through these telescopes. And I can see two people down there that are juggling. I don't know if I go back down to another look to see if they're there again. Oh yeah, they're still there. But then when you leave the telescope, they're not. Which is a little bit creepy. Right, so I think we're My good heading towards the carnival now. Hello. Yeah, it didn't really say that much, to be honest. She's some kind of beauty. You know, that's where all the He's talking about the statue. used to pass through. Which they still allowed average Janes and Joes to enter. You know, you gotta be somebody now. You see, um, here, um, I think you could start to slip in the more negative connotations um, as you begin to approach the carnival. So it paints this nice happy picture and then changes it completely. Which is a. Uh, an interesting way to do it. I think I'm just trying to see what that is, and I think I don't know if I, I nearly fall off in this bit. Oh no! Or jump? No, I jump. <laughs> I jump to see what would happen. <laughs> it was a mistake. So here, before we approach the carnival, um, hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. 
Um, join us next time as we actually get into the carnival Deep and then the see Paragon the goings on and to get into the meat of the game. If you've liked, uh, subscribe. Um, if you are subscribed, get, click a bell to get another our upcoming videos and keep updated on our Facebook and Twitter pages for upcoming going on going ons in the gaming world. So I'll see you next time on Bioshock Infinite.